Hello. Welcome to this tutorial on how to get started using the Quanzer Interactive Labs virtual experiments. As with any Quanzer Interactive Labs product, the first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to portal.quanzer.com. And if you haven't already, register as a new user with this link right here. You'll have to enter an email address. The email address is used by your institutional instructor to set up your account, as well as create a new password. You can also enter a first and last name and country as optional extras. Finally, agree to the terms and conditions, privacy policy, and then hit register to create your new account. You'll then be logged in. In this case, I'll log in with my existing account. And from there, you'll be able to go to the downloads page and access the application itself. In this case, we're going to be looking at Quanzer virtual experiments, which are compatible with MATLAB Simulink and only compatible with Windows 10. I'll download this one here. Once I have that downloaded, continue with the installation process. Now that I got the application downloaded, I'm going to open up the application and continue with the very straightforward process of installing the application by hitting install. Once I give permission, it should take a minute or two to finish. Once it's finished installing, launch the application. The first thing you'll see is a login screen where you'll need to enter the credentials that you registered on the portal. And you're ready to go. You can navigate through the list of products by scrolling your mouse wheel up and down or using the buttons at the side to find the products that you have available to you with your institutional license. There's also an information menu at the top that gives you some more information about the privacy policies, attributions, links to technical support, and also the current version number that you have installed. If a new version is available, this eye will turn into a red exclamation mark, and you can access that version by clicking here, which will take you back to the downloads page to get the newest version. There's also a global settings menu that has some other settings like being able to show content you may or may not have access to, Invert your mouse settings for moving around the environment and also global graphics options like being able to enable a frame rate limit and shadow quality settings so that you can limit the performance requirements of the system on lower end machines. By default, these are set to be able to work on most lower end laptops, but you can turn these off if you want a really nice rich graphical experience on a higher end system like a gaming PC. What I'll do first is go into one of the workspace environments, in this case for the Pendulum workspace, and show you around. As you can see here, you can click with your left mouse and drag around to get different views of the device itself, as well as being able to access pre-configured views by clicking on the buttons above. For the pendulum system specifically, there's also a lift pendulum button that allows you to lift the pendulum up to 180 degrees for inverted pendulum or dynamic experiments. In the settings menu, there's other options that you can use to configure this particular experimental platform. In this case, things like locking the servo base and also being able to specify exactly what angle you wanna lift it to, as well as more global settings like being able to show frames per second, communications per second, as well as enabling focal blur to get a more detailed graphical experience. Finally, there's an open content button that will go to the downloads page for this particular product and give you access to the Simulink models that we have created as well as the curriculum for this particular experimental platform. Next, if I open a more complex workspace, in this case the Quanzer Arm, you can see here there's both a simplified workspace do fundamentals development as well as a pick and place workspace that allows you to interact with the actual environment around the arm itself. If I open the more simplified workspace, you can see here, it is a little bit more detailed in that you can still move around and scroll in and out to get different views of the arm. But in this case, we've introduced an RGB camera view as well as a depth camera view. And also, as you can see down here, a collision indicator that tells you if the arm itself has impacted anything around it. There's the same default camera views, but also a reset button to put the arm back into its initial position if it ends up in an unknown state. And you can see some of the other simulation options that are available here as well. Things like showing polar coordinates, or as I've mentioned before, the collisions indicator. These controls are reflected in other environments as well. However, for the couple tanks environment, because of the high level of interactivity that the couple tanks has, you can also click on elements of the couple tanks, which highlight in red, and change their configuration directly in the environment. In this case, opening and closing the disturbance indicator, and also reconfiguring the outputs from the pump itself into the different tanks. 
You can also set the disturbance valve position from the menu, as well as being able to configure the outlets from the menu as well. And that's all. You're ready to get started using Quanzer Interactive Labs Virtual Experiments with MATLAB Simulink. Your next step would be to download a simulation package from the link I showed you with the book and open up a MATLAB Simulink model to work with your system or access customized resources from your institution. If you have any questions, feel free to go to our support page on the portal at portal.quanzer.com or email us at digital.quanzer.com. Thanks.